So Kamala Harris and Tim Walls have decided to come out of the basement and do a media blitz. And um, uh, there are a bunch of interesting consequences to that. So uh, first of all, you're now seeing and hearing a lot of stuff. Some of it is positive and a lot of it is negative, right? So, and look, I expected this, that the more that she talks, uh, the more there's stuff to like pick apart. Uh, the more reason there is to critique the campaign and say, you guys are not really doing it right. And by the way, not surprising because she brought a lot of the people who were on Biden's staff are now with her in her campaign. And I mean, those people are fucking idiots. <laughs> I don't know how else to say it. These are not good, intelligent political minds. These are conventional wisdom machines, right? So right off the bat, I'd like to give myself a little credit because everybody you know, Everybody you know was out there say, I don't understand. Kamala needs to do a lot more interviews and she needs to get out there. And look, I agree with that from a principled perspective, from the idea that like, if you're running for president, you owe it to the American public to be out there, right? So it's almost like it's not debatable from, from that perspective that like you just, you're obligated to do it. It's a responsibility. But where I disagreed with people is this notion that like when they were kind of hiding them, that like that's bad strategy. I was like, I, I don't think that's bad strategy. It's just not, right? Like, all the polls show generic Democrat beats Trump by six points. The best way to show Kamala is a quote-unquote generic Democrat is to hide her and have everybody project onto her whatever they want to project onto her, right? You're giving off generic Democrat vibes if you're only showing up once a week in people's faces, right? To say something real quick and then dip again. So, the I don't think the strategy was wrong. Now, I do think it was wrong vis-a-vis Tim Walls, because Tim Walls is a huge asset. In the cable news interview format, he's a superstar. This is how he made a name for himself. This is how he shot up to the top of the VP power rankings, is he would do these cable news hits, and the things he would say would go viral, and people would love it, right? So him, I would have him out there all the time, doing all the cable news interviews in the world. Her, I actually kind of like the strategy of keep having her do her rallies so that she's like, still connected to the voters, but, you know, whatever. Once a week, she could do an interview uh, with the media, right? So, but anyway, so they're doing this massive blitz now, and they're doing all these interviews. Uh, as I said, there's good and bad stuff. Let's start with the good. So here she's on The View, and this is the first time, I believe, that she's rolled out this new policy proposal. Let's listen. I took care of my mother when she was sick. She was diagnosed with cancer. Mm -hmm. And so it is a personal experience for me as well as something I care deeply about. Um, you know, taking care of a, mm. a, a parent, um, you know, that means trying to cook what they want to eat, right. what they can eat. It means picking out clothes for them that doesn't, soft enough that it doesn't irritate their skin, right? right? It means trying to think of something funny to, to make them laugh or smile. Mm -hmm. yeah. And there's so much about that that really is about giving folks dignity. Mm -hmm. And to your point about being in the sandwich generation, there are so many people in our country who are right in the middle. They're taking care of their kids and they're taking care of their aging parents. Mm -hmm. And it's just almost impossible to do it all, especially if they work. We're finding that so many are then having to leave their job, which means losing a source of income, yeah. not to mention the emotional stress. Mm -hmm. And so what I am proposing is that basically what we will do is allow Medicare to cover in-home health care. Oh. Right. So, and because we're talking about these kinds of things where it's just about helping an aging parent or person, um, you know, prepare a meal, um, you know, put their sweater on. Yes. Mm -hmm. And it's about dignity for that individual. It's about independence yeah. for that individual. Oh, yes. I mean, what, people are of declining skills to some extent, but their dignity has, their pride has not declined. No. They, want to, they want to stay in their home. They don't want to go somewhere else. Plus for the family to send them to a residential care facility to hire somebody is yeah. so expensive. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And, 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 and I'll just say, well, but here's the other thing about it. So, you know, people say, well, how are you gonna pay for it? Here, yeah. Here's the thing. Here's how we pay for it. Part of what I also intend to do is allow Medicare to continue to negotiate drug prices against these big pharmaceutical companies, mm -hmm. which means we are gonna save Medicare the money because we're not gonna be paying these high prices. Right. And that those resources are best then put in a way that helps a family like the one you are describing. Which, which you have already done. Which with we insulin. have already right. done yeah. with yeah. insulin. Yeah. So it can be done. It absolutely can be done. And it has, 
It has to be about just seeing what's happening. And and it's such a burden that's emotional, financial, physical. Mm -hmm. So if you give me this Kamala from now until Election Day, she'll win by 10 And helping people do what they rightly want and need to be able to do. When you get her talking about uh, genuinely progressive ideas economically, um, that's when she does well. So, uh, for example, she came out of the gates talking about banning price gouging, and then that baited the idiots on the right to argue against a ban on price gouging, which means they are ban they are arguing for price gouging, <laughs> which is like, how do you not realize this is the dumbest political move you've ever done in your life? They would scream communists and Maoists and Marxists and radical and extremist. And then it's like, oh, would you look at that? I believe the exact number is in 39 states, there are already bans on price gouging. In the context of if there's like a hurricane or something, you can't just jack up your prices 500% if you're the only store in the area, right? Like these laws already exist at the state level. Uh, and the idea is just expand it a little further for other instances of price gouging. So she came out of the gates hot with that. The right was baited into overreacting. That was phenomenal for, phenomenal for her. Her polls went up, but she stopped talking about it. Why did she stop talking about it? Because she's got these idiot advisors who are telling her, no, since you're a black woman, you code as far left. So you need to really stress to people that you are not far left. You are centrist. You are moderate. Now, let me be clear, guys. I have no problem with Kamala using the label moderate or centrist. But the there's like a... There is a, a code you can crack in politics, which is the path to guaranteed success, which is... And nobody's figured this out yet. <laughs> nobody's figured this out. You call yourself moderate or centrist, and then you're like... Yes, I want to do 12 weeks paid family leave and 12 weeks paid sick leave. I'm a moderate. Yeah, I'm a moderate. I want to do free school breakfast for kids and free school lunch for kids. Yeah, I'm a moderate. I want to do uh, free college for working class families just like Tim Walls did in Minnesota. Yeah, I'm a moderate. I want to eliminate medical debt like a bunch of Democratic governors have done around the country. Call yourself a centrist. Call yourself a moderate. Repeat it over and over and over and over. This way people think, oh, yes, that's, she's a centrist. She's a moderate. But then they tie that together with an increase in the minimum wage and the PRO Act and eliminating medical debt and all these really base things. That's the Goldilocks zone, right? But instead, her way of showing people she's not a radical extremist, like, oh, please vote. For I know I'm a black woman. I swear I'm not crazy. This is like the thing she's going with. Her way of doing that is I got Liz Cheney with me. Liz Cheney's right here, right? I got like I got I got a bunch of Republicans who are here and I'll, I'll talk about them and highlight them roughly 30 times more than I talk about anybody to my left. Right. So it's just the wrong way of going about proving that, you know, hey, I'm not extreme. And look, I don't think they're wrong with the view that because she's a black woman, she will code as more progressive. That's the unfortunate reality, right? That that's how a bunch of people who aren't really knee deep in politics, that is how they're going to think of it. Like Biden, even though since he's a, like a stodgy old white guy, even though economically he was way more progressive than anybody thought, he codes as moderate. And that's why he can sort of get away with that shit, right? And so she codes as on the left. And so I understand trying to soften that image. They're not wrong in saying, hey, we need to make clear, you know, hey, we're not, we're not crazy. We promise you guys should love us. But the way you do that is to call yourself a moderate and a centrist and then go through all the based left economic policies you support. So give me this, Kamala who talks about the ban on price gouging, who talks about the $6,000 child tax credit, who talks about eliminating medical debt, who talks about expanding Medicare for home care, which is what she's talking about here, who talks about fighting big pharma and lowering drug prices. And I, as I said, she'll win by 10 points. This Kamala will win by 10 points. So this was the good part of her coming out. And we're about to get to the bad part in a second. Hey, y'all, do me a favor and like and subscribe. It helps out big time in the algorithm. Click the bell as well for notifications when videos drop and watch that video on screen right now. You know you want to.